Hi, Dana here. Welcome to Sew, Learn, Create, where I make videos on sewing, quilting, crafting, and DIY projects. We are super excited today to be back in our newly remodeled studio and sewing room. If you'd like more in-depth content on that, then you can check out our Patreon page. Today's project is a simple one, but a fun one. It is a pen. It's a flower that I turned into a pen to pin onto a bag or backpack but you could also leave the pin back off and glue it to a card or other things. So, let's get started. For today's project, our flower, fabric flower pin, we only need a few pieces of fabric and it will be a hand sewing project. So here's what we need. You need some fabric and your fabrics need to either coordinate where you can do, like I did here, two different fabrics or they need to be a high contrast, where the black and the pink is a high contrast. And the black and pink is what I'm gonna to use today. You'll also need a pencil to draw out your patterns. Your patterns, three different sizes of flowers, and I'll link that in the description box below. You'll need a piece of felt to make the circle that you'll glue to the back. You'll need some type of glue, and I'm using uh, Aline's tacky glue, but you could use Elmer's glue also. And then you'll need just some a button for your center, a pin back, and some sewing thread. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your pattern and I'm going to stack my flower just like this. I want this fabric to be my, my bottom piece. I want the pink in the center and then I want this polka dot to be the, the smallest flower. So what you do is you trace your large pattern on the back of the fabric. And when you're doing dark colored fabric, you're gonna want either a chalk pencil or, some, or just a regular piece of chalk will work also. So I'm gonna just trace around my pattern. Problem with chalk pencils is they like to break. because they're soft. Now we can see our flower. If you're using a light-based fabric, then you can use just a regular pencil. And this I want my medium flower. They don't have to be exact. This, the beauty of this project is it's really simple. And then you're just gonna cut out your fabric. I like to cut the bulk of my excess fabric away so that I can get around those corners really well. If you're using cotton fabric for this project, it will fray over time, which I think adds to the texture of the piece, which makes it kind of fun. If you don't want it to fray after you put it together, you can always take a thin layer of glue and just add it to your edges and that will keep it from fraying over time. So there's our medium sized flower and I will cut out the rest of my pieces and then we'll get started with the next step. Now that we have our three uh, flowers cut out, it is uh, simple from here. We're gonna take our largest flower, put it on the bottom, take our middle flower, place it on top and center it, and take our final flower and stack it into an arrangement that you kind of like. Just that a little bit. And again, no flowers are perfect, so your flower doesn't have to be perfect either. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sew a button right in the center of this to tack all these together. But your button can be your other final design element. So I've selected a couple of buttons. I could add this polka dot button to add and make this flower a little more whimsical. I could do this kind of gray button to give it a little more subtle, elegant feel. 
and then I've selected two white buttons. This one has a little bit of texture to it. And then this one is a little bit larger, which makes a little bit bigger statement. And this is a button that I think I like the best. I can either use black thread to match the fabric that is directly underneath my button, or I can add one more small design element and use a bright pink thread, which would pick up the pink that's underneath in the middle. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So you just reel out about 12, 18 inches because you're only sewing a button so it doesn't take a lot. You're gonna thread your needle. Maybe. And I like to, when I'm sewing a button in a project like this, I like to double my thread so that it gives it a little more of a statement and also I don't have to sew as, as much, as many times around. So you wanna make sure that your button is in the center. You're gonna pick up all three layers come up from the bottom and then go back down. Now I will tell you that your, your fabric sometimes has a tendency to twist on you a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that they stay in the same direction if possible. But again, no flower is perfect and yours doesn't have to be either. Flowers are just a pretty beautiful thing. Do a couple more because I want that pink to be kind of a statement, so I want it to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to go through and make it a little thicker in the middle than I normally would. There we go. and then you wanna tie it off. How I tie off my buttons or when I'm doing hand sewing is I take a small stitch on the back underneath my threads that I've already sewn, go through this loop that I've made and pull it. And I do that at least twice, to make it a double knot. Sometimes I'll do three times. That makes it nice and secure and it's not gonna come loose. And you're gonna clip your threads. The next, the last thing we're gonna do is to give this flower a little more body to make it a little stiffer. We're gonna glue a piece of felt to the back. You could use felt or polar fleece, but it needs to be a little bit stiffer fabric. So to make my circle for my um, pattern, I'm just using the bottom of this bucket and it measures about two inches so a drinking glass would work, just whatever you have around your sewing room that makes a circle. I'm gonna cut that out. Again, on the black felt, I use the chalk pencil, or you, like I say, you can use a regular piece of chalk the other thing that would work is a small sliver of white soap. Then I'm gonna take my Eileen Tacky Glue, and I always put my glue onto my felt, not my flower. That way I don't get it outside the felt area and it get glue on my fabric pieces where I don't want it. Main thing is you want that glue to go pretty close to that outside edge. I'm going to flip my flower over. Take my circle and just do the best to center it within that space. And that gives my flower a little more body and makes it not quite so flimsy. The last thing, if you want this to be a pen, is you're going to take your pen back 
you just want to make sure that your pin back opens in the right direction. So typically you want to pin back to open on the bottom, not the top. And you would just glue that pin back using the tacky glue or hot glue just right there in the center. But I'm not going to put a pin back on mine because today I think I'm making a card for a friend of mine. And I'm going to glue mine to the center of a piece of cardstock. And then I might take it to my sewing machine and stitch around it, give it a little, little extra bonus. And then I have a nice card for someone who needs a pick me up. And as you can see, it's starting to fray. I like that look on this one. I made a, about a year ago and it's frayed and I kind of like that edging. But if you want it to not, then just take your glue and just go around the edges at the end. So now our flower is complete. I hope you liked today's project. And I'd like to give a shout out to my patron, Ruth T. And I would like to thank her for her support. If you'd like to support what I do on this, the content that I produce on this channel, consider becoming a patron. I also sell kits on my Etsy page for some of the projects that are on videos that are on the, on the channel. That link will be in the description box below as well as the Patreon. So, see you in the next one.